Hi and welcome back to Joe's DIY. Back again with another video. It's been a while since I've actually done a DIY project and I wanted to start off with my first one of the month. And this is to address a problem that we've all had when we're playing uh, retro consoles. Uh, I believe that probably the best way that you can play them is by using a SCART converter. Uh, I've gotten one, it's not the best one. I know there's the retro tink and the OSSC uh, that provides a much better picture, but some of us don't want to spend that much money. So this video is targeted strictly for those that do not want to spend too much money on retro gaming. They rather invest their money on games and things like that. So that's what this video is for. So if you want to just bear that in mind when you <laughs> comment down below, because I get a lot of uh, comments uh, stating that you can get this and you can get that. This video is strictly for those who don't don't want to spend that much money on stuff like that. So, as you know by the title, uh, I'm going to be making a shielded SCART cable uh, for one of my consoles. Uh, now, as you can see, I have the uh, NES plane right now. Let me so let me go ahead and uh, zoom that in a little bit. Okay, so let me let me kind of explain myself uh, as far as what static I'm referring to. So, if you look at the screen, I don't know if the camera's catching it or not. Uh, but there are some uh, horizontal lines uh, going uh, vertical. So what I mean by that is that the lines are horizontal, the lines themselves. But you see, like it's a, it's in a, it's a, like a line of interference that's basically scrolling up and down the screen. Okay, and the reason for that is because I have a very poorly shielded cable uh, attached to the master system, and the master system is actually attached to a switch box. Uh, it's like one of those Brandage uh, SCART switch boxes, really nice one. Um, and it's making interference with the SNES. Okay, now the, the lines are still going. I don't know if the camera's catching it or not, but if I remove uh, the SCART, I don't know if you can see that right there. But if I remove the SCART cable plug right out of the box, Okay, the lines are completely gone and you get a super clean image uh, and the reason for that is because I've taken the the SNES cable and I went ahead and let me see if I can find the cable here I went ahead and, and if you notice it's, it's a, a little stiffer and thicker because what I ended up doing is I shielded it and wrapped it with uh, some electrical tape and that's really helped it from getting any kind of outside interference uh, for some reason, I, I don't get that problem so much with the uh, super, uh, Sega Saturn that I have down there. That one right there. I don't get that problem too much, but I do get quite a bit of interference from uh, the N64, definitely, and a little bit of the Sega, uh, the Sega Master System. So uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to shield your own cable and this is kind of like a cool mod for those that don't really want to spend a lot of money on cables. Um, there's a couple of companies. I'll put some on the screen there. But there's a couple of companies that charge quite a bit for uh, really nice high-end shielded uh, RGB cables. I mean, we're talking about, you know, 40 to 80 bucks. And I honestly don't see the reason to do that if you can get go ahead and shield your cables yourself and only spend about 6 to $12 for whatever RGB cable you want to use for whatever uh, retro console you want to use. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that how to do that today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here are all the things you're going to need uh, for this DIY project. So you're going to need some shielding tape. Um, I've This is like your typical stuff that you'd find like at a Home Depot. Uh, I think the roll was about seven bucks. Um, so I bought it uh, kind of a couple years ago. And it's basically uh, the kind of tape that they would use for uh, air conditioning, uh, air ducts or something like that, I'm not sure. But you should be able to find it in that section. You also need uh, some electrical tape. Uh, and no, you can't use duct tape because that would kind of defeat the purpose. You want something that's a little thicker, but just made out of uh, plastic and some scissors. And you'll also need uh, your uh, RGB cable uh, that you have. I took this off the uh, the master system and I've cut a little bit uh, from the tip. I don't know if you can see that right there. Just because uh, the plug wasn't really entering 
the uh, the end the master system correctly so I had to trim a little bit of that uh, I'm not sure if that made it worse or not but uh, we'll see I'm hoping that we can shield this um, and as you can see there's no uh, cuts in the actual uh, shielding that it already has uh, but we're gonna just basically add extra shielding to that so uh, one of the things that I like to do is I like to uh, without having to measure I'm gonna take uh, the let me see if I can show you so I'm gonna take the cable and I'm basically gonna fold it in half okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tape the uh, the aluminum tape and I'm going to basically roughly match that okay so all the way up to the end so that is roughly the length that I want the tape um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that in half or cut that away from the electrical tape and now I have this nice strip of aluminum tape okay all right, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to fold that in half. That way um, I have enough for the entire cable. So I'm going to fold that in half. And th these cables are pretty thin, so you really only just need half. I'm going to go ahead and fold the whole thing in half. Okay. Okay, so once I have that completely folded in half, uh, now it's time to uh, open it up. And you're gonna wanna trim, uh, trim it right down the middle so that you have two strips of the aluminum tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now with my scissors. Got my scissors here. Okay, so eventually now you'll have two strips and I'm gonna show you what to do next with, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do uh, the shielding with one of the strips first, because we're gonna need two. So you're gonna wanna take your cable, okay? And you're gonna wanna set it nice and straight somewhere. And then you're gonna wanna start peeling the foil right off. So the, the foil is kind of uh, taped to a piece of uh, paper and you want to separate that so the adhesive is exposed and you're just going to pull that apart okay be careful that it rolls up on you because it will it's kind of have to make sure that it's nice and straight so i'm going to take my first piece and i'm going to take the cable right here and i'm going to go ahead and uh make sure that it's covered halfway down so you see how right now it's glued uh, with the adhesive like halfway through the whole thing you want to follow that same pattern all the way up to you have the entire cable uh, enclosed inside the piece of aluminum so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that maybe probably speed up the tape a little bit Okay, so you'll notice that now the, the cable is starting to get a little bit stiffer and it's gonna be like that because uh, you are basically wrapping it up in uh, aluminum. So the next thing is to start uh, closing in the tape on the cable uh, till you're completely shielded. So what you're basically doing is you're folding each side and kind of covering the whole thing. So that way the, the cable is basically shielded. So let me go ahead and do that now. All right, so as you can see, I've got basically half of the cable completely shielded with aluminum. So I think the next step is to go ahead and repeat the other side. I'm not gonna record that because it's kind of redundant, but you get the point. You just have to make sure that you glue or you tape the cable right down the middle so that, so you can wrap it up like this. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and finish up that other side. Okay, so um, I went ahead and uh, completed the shielding of the SCART cable. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, basically shielded from the tip of that, this plastic piece all the way down to the other tip 
a little plastic piece. I don't know if this is necessary or not, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it anyways. Uh, what, I really don't have anything to lose if I do it or not. So um, so now I'm ready to start taping up with the electrical tape. So what you're going to want to do is you want to take this uh, electrical tape and you're going to want to wind it all over the cable. And it is going to take a while. Let me kind of show you how I start that off. So I'm going to get the piece of electrical tape. And I'm going to see if I can show you how to not use up too much of it because it, I mean, you could wind it really tight, but I don't think it's necessary. It's just making sure that you basically uh, cover all the aluminum. So what I like to do is I'll start with a full uh, wind on the first one and kind of slope it a little bit so that I can uh, uh, make my tape uh, cover the rest of it without having to use too many winds. So let me see if I can kind of show... So there's a wind right there and I'm going to start kind of winding the tape at a kind of an angle so I can cover as much as I can from that aluminum and not make the the cable so thick. So yeah, as you can see, like I, it's kind of covering it more as I angle it without wasting so much of the tape. So uh, you want to do that all the way up to the very end till you get to basically the other side here. And once you have everything covered, you should be okay with uh, uh, blocking off all the interference uh, from the uh, from the console or the electrical currents. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of uh, skip this part and kind of show you how I completely covered it with electrical tape. And then we'll go ahead and test it to see if it worked or not. Okay, so we have the cable completely covered with uh, electrical tape all the way through. And I also checked to make sure that I didn't miss any spots because that's kind of important since you're trying to block off any possible interference uh, from the electrical power supply or even from the TV signal. So that looks pretty secure to me. I think the only metal that's exposed is right here. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully fix the problem of those lines. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and try it out. Okay. So I'm kind of excited to find out if I finally got rid of that uh, nasty signal that I was getting on my uh, SNES and on my other components. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the SNES. And I'm going to grab... Hold on, let me see. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the SNES. Hopefully I don't get any more interference. Okay, so so far the picture looks pretty clean. I'll kind of try to get a little closer so you can see that. And I'm waiting for the entire logo to come out. Yeah, and I absolutely don't see any interference. It looks very clean. Absolutely. Yeah, it look, that looks very, very clean. I don't see absolutely no more lines. All the uh, scan lines look good. Absolutely no interference. And as you can see, the, the SNES is plugged in. So we're going to go ahead. Sorry, the master system is plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and try that now and go ahead and shut this off and we'll go ahead and switch it over to uh, the master system and I got my master system controller here right over here so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on okay so yeah right off the bat the picture is completely clean I don't see any interference I think the uh, the actual uh, shielding really helped because I I think that that interference is completely gone. I don't see it. I'm going to go ahead and start a game. Let's see if I can. I'll just start Alex Kidd. I know that's one that pretty much everyone knows. Yeah, I'm not seeing those lines anymore. 
obviously you see a little bit of the typical artifacting um, but the, the lines are completely gone I don't see any interference so that that looks great to me so basically a little bit of shielding and a little bit of uh, electrical tape could help uh, clear up any interference from the, your cables uh, I'm gonna make a recommendation that this works uh, you're free to try it or you're free to just spend 40 or 50 bucks on more expensive cables. It's up to you. Uh, personally, for me, I'd rather not spend my money that way and I'm content with this picture. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep my setup as is. Thank you so much for uh, watching my video today. Uh, I look forward to putting up more videos and sorry for not doing another DIY so sooner, but uh, I've been kind of busy with the uh, other videos I'm working on right now. So. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.